Hello everyone and welcome to Off the Beaten Tracks. Uh, today we're going to try something slightly different, uh, though probably no less obscure to some of you. Um, I have lived in LA for 35, 36 years, but I did spend a lot of my formative music appreciation years in Canada. And thusly, I have a soft spot in my heart for Canadiana. I've collected it avidly over the years, and I'm going to share a little bit of it with you now. So we're going to start with the band Noah. Uh, unfortunately, I did not pay this $2.99 over here. I paid this smaller in print, but much greater in number price over here. Now, these guys started out as Buzzy and the Belvedere's and then changed their name to Time and a Half. Time with a Y, just to show you how 60s they really were. This is their second album as Noah. It's from uh, 1972 and was produced by Randy Bachman. In fact, Randy plays lead guitar on a majority of these tracks and wrote a song on this called Sussex, I believe. Uh, the band even toured with BTO. Uh, it is rocky with some psych elements and well worth a listen. A good band. Uh, I've got the other album somewhere, but... Uh, the second album I have, uh, second, is Lydia Taylor. Now, I've got two here from Lydia. Uh, this is Lydia Taylor Band. Uh, this was recommended to me uh, by a friend in Canada when I was up there. She's from Mississauga, just on the west side of Toronto. Uh, this is her second album, and this is her EP from 1983. Um, she won a Juno Award. That's the Canadian equivalent of the Grammys. Uh, I think in 83, um, as the best uh, up-and-coming recording star. And right after that, she couldn't get a recording contract. This is the last recording she ever did. I don't know why you would be on the rise and not get a recording contract and kind of be pushed out of the business, but Canadian rock and roll is, is a little like that. It's a little generic. Uh, you know, it has moments, but it's hard rock. And um, they do a cover of an ACDC song, Highway to Hell, which isn't bad. Uh, might be worth looking into as one of those guilty pleasures. So a little change of pace here. This is a little older. This is from 1965. This is Catherine McKinnon. And this is uh, Voice of an Angel, Volume 2. Now, Catherine... Uh, talk about Canadian, was a regular on Don Messer's Jubilee, which was a show, I think it played the weekends, can't remember really, uh, on Canadian television. Canucks of all stripes would tune into Don Messer's Jubilee back in the day. They, I think they mostly concentrated on country but eastern, you know, maritime type uh, music. Uh, she was married to Don uh, Heron, which was practically Canadian royalty. Don was a writer, comedian. He had a character called Charlie Farkison, where he used to put on a hat and act really stupid, uh, who was uh, made a number of appearances on Hee Haw. Uh, so back to Catherine here. Uh, although she did sing a lot of pop songs during her long career, uh, this is uh, a, obviously a folk album. And so was the uh, aptly uh, named uh, Volume 1, Voice of an Angel. And that was her most popular album, Voice of an Angel 1. And she certainly does have that very, one of those high-pitched Irish voices that you fall in love with. Uh, some very nice songs, some very nice presentations, especially if you like that kind of, shall we say, I wouldn't say easy listening, but certainly easy to listen to folk as opposed to the kind of Phil Oaks uh, approach. Staying in the same kind of vein, uh, this is David Campbell underneath a blue Canadian sky. He even has Canadian in the title. Uh, ironically, he's actually uh, was born in Guyana, but moved to Canada when he was very young. This is his eighth album from 1979. Uh, it is Folky, but again, uh, not oppressively folky. There are a couple of funny songs on here. There's one about, um, it's called July Indian, which kind of has the sense of humor. Uh, you could almost hear John Prine uh, writing it. It just has, you know, it just has that twinkle in his eye, which is nice for folk. You know, it can't be always too serious as uh, some people take it. Uh, he's also, David is also a uh, writer, has written five books. Um and, well, we'll check it out. It has a nice voice and, as I say, uh, some interesting songs. 
going in a different direction entirely, we have the unadulterated pop of Gary and Dave. These guys were on radio a lot back when I was in high school in 1974. They had a shortish career. Um, All in the Past is from 1974. That's this album. For some reason, the title is on the back and not on the front. Um, they do It Might As Well Rain Until September by Carol King, which uh, got some radio airplay back in the day. And their self-penned uh, Could You Ever Love Me Again, uh, which is a pretty good pop tune from the day. Uh, the rest of the album is not filled with what you call masterpieces. Um, it's certainly a slice of you know, mid, early to middle pop from the era. Um, their lyrics aren't exactly uh, stellar. You know, the, their dog here might have written them. Um, little Jim, the bass playing on this, I was listening to just drifted off in a, into the bass playing, and it sounds like it was uh, done by uh, somebody from a uh, Holiday Inn band. Uh, overall, worth picking up just for the couple of songs. Um, the rest of it is a little bit, um, as I say, generic pop from the day. Uh, they did quit the pop business uh, sometime, I think, in the late 70s and became uh, pilots for Air Canada. Uh, this is the extras. This is their last album. I also have uh, this album, uh, or this is an EP, The Watcher. Now, the extras were an interesting band. They started out as sort of a um, bare naked ladies, but uh, new wavy. Uh, their first album, I think, was called Bits or Bits and Pieces, something like that. Uh, was a fun album with catchy tunes in that kind of new wavy style. Uh, it had uh, songs like uh, a Circular Impression on it, which is probably maybe the best known or most fun uh, tribute song to condoms that you'll probably likely to come across. And after the first album they did, um, their second album was kind of a, a departure. It was a little, a lot less funny, a lot less uh, kind of new way poppy, went into more keyboard oriented songs, a little more, I wouldn't say loungy, and it's not a bad album, but you know, it was, a, for me and for a number of people in the day, it was it was a departure. These were uh, more of a departure. Uh, kind of reminded me of the Chaz Jangle albums that were put out in the 80s. Um, you know, this is from 84. Kind of clubbish, dancey, heavy keyboards, um, kind of drum based stuff. Uh, this had their biggest hit on it called I Can't Stand Still. It was a top 10 hit and won numerous awards, and very similar to um, uh, Lydia Taylor, uh, as soon as they put out that album and had a big hit on it, uh, they couldn't find a record contract and uh, ended up out of the business. I don't know what it is about Canada, but that's the way it is. Uh, this is The Start, Hey You, this is from 1980, uh, paid $1.99, which I thought was a pretty good price. This is, um, kind of hard rockish. Uh, these guys played Toronto venues like the Horseshoe, The Edge, and Larry's Hideaway. In the day, I'm surprised uh, my band didn't run into them. Uh, they also played the big uh, New Wave Festival, even though they're not really New Wave, uh, called Heat Wave, uh, which I attended um, as a member of the audience, and it certainly lived up to its name. Uh, featured Talking Heads, The Rumor, The Pretenders, Elvis uh, Costello, the B-52s, and Canadian bands like Teenage Head and The Kings. You don't remember this band from the, uh, from the festival, but as I say, it was very, very hot. This is a little generic in spots, but there are some good tunes on this, kind of catchy in spots, uh, well worth looking up. Now we get into Ray Materic. This is from 1979. I really like this guy. This is his fifth album. All of his albums are good. Uh, the first one I ever bought, which I'm sure I'll do on another video, is called Side Streets, which is a wonderful folk pop album. Some great songs. Neon Rain was his second album, which had his biggest hit, uh, Linda Put the Coffee On. Third album had a song called Feeling Lucky, uh, Feeling Kind of Lucky Tonight. Wonderful tune. I don't get why this guy wasn't huger, but again, Canada. 
Uh, I would say get any of his records. This one little trivia for you has Daniel Lenoir playing on it, lead guitar. He also mixed the album and was engineer. Of course, he went on to produce Bob Dylan and a raft of major acts. Uh, Ray is still around and uh, put out a, a bunch of albums in the 2000s, which I'm certainly going to look up when I get back into Canada very soon. My last album, this is Mandela, Soul Crusade. Uh, this is from 1968. Um, this album has a lot of soul elements, but it also gets into some um, groove and psych in spots. Uh, some good guitar, some good organ in here. Uh, this is the third copy of this album I have, and probably the only one that's in really decent shape. While it's a good album, a little tiny bit overwrought in sections, after all, it was a crusade. Um, what makes this lineup, uh, it's the lineup of this band that really makes it an interesting album, I think. Um, it has Whitey Glenn uh, playing drums, who went on to play with Alice Cooper and Lou Reed. And uh, what makes it really special, though, I think, is it's one of the early albums after Ronnie Lane and the Disciples that Dominique Troiano uh, was involved in. He played lead guitar and wrote most of the songs on this, along with singer Roy Kenner. Uh, he went on to form uh, the band Bush. Great band, great album. One album, unfortunately. It has the song I Can Hear You Calling on it, which a lot of you might remember from uh, Three Dog Nights Naturally. Um, Roy and Dominic then went on uh, to the James Gang and replaced uh, Joe Walsh after he left. Uh, from there, uh, Dominic did some wonderful solo albums. Great stuff. Uh, had a very unique sound. Uh, and went on to join the Guess Who for their final two albums, Flavors and Power in the Music, which were both terrific albums. I mourned the loss of uh, the Guess Who uh, from that point because they really were slightly changed from Kurt Winner's uh, guitar, uh, but a different direction for that band and really, really good albums. Check those out if you don't know them. Um, we unfortunately lost... Uh, Dominic in 2005 to cancer. Didn't want to end on a downer uh, note, but uh, his music lives on. Please check it out. Uh, Dominic has oh, 10, 15 albums out there that are all good and well worth a listen. That's my Canadian stuff for today. Uh, I will certainly be doing other Canadian stuff in future episodes. Um, please subscribe. Uh, if you like this, or even if you don't like it, subscribe. What the heck? It's not an obligation. Uh, and join me next time for Off the Beaten Tracks.